All mine. Can't run from me. that wealth is wasted on the strip. There are people in Freeside who need food and medicine. There's so many refugees to care for. Wish the followers would get me some better armor. Keep an eye out for trouble. That is one battered iBot. It's a miracle it's still functioning. Hey there. Need any? Sure.
Welcome to the Grub and Gulp. Just a little rest stop that me and my good friend Lupe set up. Last stop on your way into New Vegas, first stop on your way out. That's what I say. Sure, fire away. I think there are a few places, but I've heard that the gun runners sell the best. Dr. Usanagi runs a medical clinic up the road. All right, then. Sure thing. Anything else I can do for you? See you later. You need water? I got water. Clean and fresh. Straight from Lake Mead. If you're low on caps, I've also got slightly irradiated wasteland water. A little fallout never killed anybody. The NCR fixed up the pipe network pretty good, and water merchants like me are allowed to have some of it to sell. If we have a water license, of course. Still, it beats the inconvenience of having to trek all the way to the lake to resupply. There's a few independent ones like me, but it's mostly the big trading outfits that deal in water, like the Crimson Caravan Company. Shoot. They won't just let anybody into the strip, but you should be able to have a good time in Freeside itself. Just, um... Keep a close eye on your caps. There are a bunch of crazies hopped up on all kind of drugs. Apparently, they're using one of the old vaults as a hideout. The army should really get in there and wipe them all out, but I guess they've got more than enough trouble to deal with right now. Their main base is right over there by the old airport. It's called Camp McCarran now. Some people like to paint them all as a bunch of bullies. Me? I'm glad they're around. They do what they can to keep things safe and orderly. All right. Glad to do it. Until next time.
Over here. Come on. No. That red beret is looking good, soldier. If it's bad news, you can take it up with the colonel. If it's good news, it better involve some dead fiends. Back of drugged out killers. They're addicted to every stim, every pill, every psychoactive enema on this fucked up earth. I've got three fiends I want dead, and I don't give a goddamn how it gets done. That sound like something that interests you? First one calls herself Violet. God knows why. The name is the prettiest thing about her. Spends most of her time with a pack of vicious dogs. Then there's Driver Nafai. He's fast, and he's brutal. Killed about a dozen of my men with a goddamn driver iron. Hence his name. And finally, Cook Cook. Rapist, pyromaniac, and damn good chef if you believe the fiends we've captured. Probably the craziest of the lot. I'm not gonna feed you any bullshit. These aren't your common Vegas trash. They've all killed good NCR men, and plenty of mercs, too. You go after them, any of them, you're in for a hell of a fight. So, which one is it gonna be? Violet it is. Wish I could give you more advice on how to bring her down, but we know less about her than the other two. Just watch out for the dogs. She raises them herself. Might as well be their mother, and never leave her side. Good question. Fiend territory is southeast of here, but they range all over the area. None of them stays in any one place for long. One more thing. If you want the full reward, you need to bring me a recognizable head. My superiors need proof they're gone. That means no headshots, no decapitations till after they're dead, and no damage to the face. If you want to be safe, aim for the chest. You bring me a head that looks like a rotten tomato, people will be doubting, and I won't be authorized to pay the entire bounty. Good luck to you, and don't get careless. Damn right I am, and I'm paying bounties. Violet's got dogs. Lots of dogs. While they're ripping you to shreds up close, she'll be putting rounds through you with a rifle. Right.
Make yourself at home here. It's cozy for an airport. Hey, my man. Ten of spades. First recon sharpshooter at your service. Oh, yeah. F fine. Just a little st st stutter. Had it since I was a kid. Doesn't stop me from kicking ass. D damn right. The LT. Goro Betts gave it to me. See, I wanted to be ace of spades. But the LT says, sorry, kid, you're t t t too green. So he calls me 10 instead. It's okay, though. I get a few more k k k kills under my belt. He'll move me up to Jack. Jack of spades. Sounds better, right? I keep at it. Eventually, I'll make it to ace. Think I'll skip queen, though. Shit. Long as I can remember, had a rifle in my hand since I was three. That's what my dad always says. Learned to shoot on our ramp, way west of here. Same as the LT. He's a f f farm kid, too. Oh, they recruited me, what, a year ago? Taught me to kick even more ass than before. These guys, they really know how to kick some ass. Kicking ass. Mostly kicking ass. See, we're watching the perimeter right now, looking for those fiends to come back. When they show their faces, that's when we go to work. One shot, one k k kill. That's the first recon way. Yeah, I'll s see you around. Never seen you around before. What do you want? Yeah, try not to get killed. Yeah? Not unless you count the fiends as serious. Gorobetz keeps us inside the fence most of the time. Doesn't matter to me. I just shoot bad guys. Sooner or later, they'll move us out to the dam, though. That's when the shit gets nasty. Legion fights to win, and they're smart. Hell of a lot smarter than these crazy fiends. But I don't feel bad about shooting Legion boys. Fiends, on the other hand, sometimes I get pangs of conscience. Not often, but sometimes. Some cute little junkie bitch, so fucked up she doesn't even know that she's the bad guy. And I've got a headshot her. Makes me think. Might just be sex, though. I see some cute little number and I'd rather get in her pants. So maybe I'm a stone-cold bitch after all. What gave me away? The big gun, the shades, or the attitude? They don't. Only the good ones do. My partner's got some potential, so I let him wear those goofy glasses. I tell him they're his training shades. He totally buys it. Truth is, his eyes just suck. The little guy. Ten of spades. I like him because he listens. Doesn't shut up the rest of the time, but when I talk, he listens. Also, he doesn't pull any stupid come-ons, like practically every other horndog alpha male on this base. Might be, he's just scared of me, though. Yeah, we spot for each other, watch each other's backs. Usually works pretty well, unless you get paired up with an asshole. Thing is, there's a lot of assholes in the army. I keep hoping they'll pair me up with some hot blonde like you see on those old pinups. Shit, I don't even care if she can shoot straight. Can't have everything. Yeah, right. You're sniffing up the wrong skirt. Try me again when you're tall, blonde, and female. Not unless you count the fiends as serious. Gorobetz keeps us inside the fence most of the time. Doesn't matter to me. I just shoot bad guys. Sooner or later, they'll move us out to the dam, though. That's when the shit gets nasty. Legion fights to win, and they're smart. Yeah, well, we can't all be heartless shitheads, right? Yeah, try not to get killed. Howdy. Name Sterling, first recon. Can't say I've seen you before. I'd remember if I had. Got a good memory for faces, landmarks and such, too. Comes with practice, that's all. And 
a lot of scouting from place to place. I call her the Long Caribbean. Didn't always have the scope, but I did that myself. Been shooting with her so long, couldn't bring myself to toss her away. Would have felt guilty to part with the old girl. The other snipers used bolt action, but Gore Betts reckoned it didn't matter none if I was different, so long as I could hit my targets. Used to be a ranger, one of the first they sent out east back before we took the dam. Observation and reconnaissance. We took the lay of the land, checked out the locals, and kept ourselves inconspicuous. A couple friends of mine were the first to scout the dam. That was back in 73, if I recall. A lot of those rangers are dead now. Vegas always chewed men up. It's just a little more literal nowadays. Well, that wasn't really a matter of choice. Got myself caught by legionaries up near Malpe. They had themselves some fun with me. Mangled my hands and feet pretty good. Wasn't much good with the pistol after that. Wasn't gonna be trekking across the waist on any more long scouts either. Caesar's boys figured I wasn't going anywhere after what they'd done to me. So they didn't bother tying me up. I crawled out of there on my elbows and knees. Must have looked a sight. Then I rolled down an embankment into the Colorado. I guess I had a mind to drown rather than give Caesar's boys the satisfaction of killing me. But a couple rangers happened to be watching from across the river. They jumped on in and pulled me out of there. Lucky break, they said. Going on six months now, but I reckon we'll be moving out soon enough. Can't talk about the details. Till then, we'll man the towers and keep an eye on the fiends. We've had more than our share of trouble from their direction. Whole thing smells of Caesar to me. Of course, that's just guesswork. But I still bet a few caps he's stirring up the locals against us. Always a pleasure. Keep yourself safe. I'm Bitter Root, first recon. You got a reason to talk to me? You trying to start trouble? Or do you really not know where I got that name? It's a con name. You know, the great cons? That's what my parents were. I figured I grew up around the bastards. They owed me a name after all they put me through. They're dead. Got themselves killed at Bitter Springs. Served them right if you ask me. It was a massacre. That's what a lot of NCR folk will tell you. Most of them feel plenty bad about what happened. But I was there. Saw it myself. I don't care what anybody says. The cons asked for Bitter Springs. They wouldn't leave the NCRB. My damn parents, too. They were just as bad as the rest. You're not fully grown till you've taken a beat down. Everybody gathers around and hits you till you're damn near dead. After that, if you haven't begged for mercy, you get to choose a new name. One you'll use for the rest of your life. When NCR slaughtered the cons at Bitter Springs, I hadn't got my beat down yet. I was still too young. The way I see it, Bitter Springs was my beat down. So afterward, I gave myself a name. It's all I got from the cons. It's all I ever want. Don't I? Mister, you never met my parents. My dad got himself fucked up every chance he got. Always started with folk for no reason. Hell, he was the one who taught me to shoot. You know how? By taking pot shots at NCR, and not just soldiers. Civilians, too. Even kids. Then he'd get high with his buddies and swap tales about the folk they killed. Bunch of animals. And my mom? A couple of times she tried to sell me to some waster just to score some jet. Even the other cons said she was useless. Only reason they kept her around was because she was... A, how'd my dad say it? A smoking piece of ass. Guess I could tell a pretty good story if I had a mind. But the truth is, I don't know. Just got lucky. They brought me to Daughtry after the battle. He was just a captain back then. Guess he saw something in me. Knew I didn't belong with the cons. Maybe he felt bad, too, about how his men killed my folks. I told him he did me a service, but he didn't believe me. Still doesn't. He's a good man, Daughtry. Doesn't act like it sometimes, I know. But he didn't have to take me in. It's like I tell Major Daughtry. Best not to look under a rock if you don't really want to know what's there. Could be that NCR found some blood on me and none of it mine. 
Could be that a few of those cons didn't die from NCR bullets. I had scores of my own to settle. Deeper ones than NCR ever had. Don't bother asking who they were with. Yeah, that's probably best. While, I guess. I don't keep too careful track of time. I like to keep things simple. Just focus on now. That's why they made me a sniper. You let your mind wander back a ways and you lose sight of what's in front of your eyes. Good way to miss a mark. Yeah, look, he's not my real father. He just looked after me for a while. It's a long story. I'd get tired of talking before it was through. All right, goodbye. Hello? Hey. Nelson's back. We still haven't gotten Ranger Morales' body back from the fiends. Sure doesn't inspire confidence in the guys you're serving with. Make yourself at home here. It's cozy for an airport. usually good with faces, but I don't think I've seen you here before. What brings you to Camp McCarran? Hmm. You don't cook by any chance, do you? Farber's doing his best, but it's hard to manage an army with half my staff in line for the latrine. Honestly, we're fighting a lot of fires right now. The fiends keep pressing their position from Vault 3. We've got the Legion breathing down our necks across the river. We actually took an officer alive last week, but so far he hasn't spoken a word. I have Lieutenant Boyd on that already, and she's excellent, but I think she's hit a wall. Talk to her if you like. See if she has any use for you. Her office is right above mine, but I think she might be interrogating right now. So she'd be upstairs on the other side of the building. Yeah. On top of everything else, I can't send a patrol on a bathroom break without it being ambushed by someone who heard they were coming. So somebody's getting the word out. Calm is what you have to be when people look to you. And it's all you can be when things are out of your hands. As in chem fiends. Biggest gang of raiders I've ever seen. Nothing like addiction to swell your numbers. Psychotic and completely unpredictable. They set up shop in Vault 3 to the west. Every day they attack our positions and my men repel them. But every day there's more of them and less of us. I sent one of my rangers after their leader to try and destabilize them. He didn't return. Hell of a thing, losing a ranger. You come to depend on them, and they come through for you so often, you forget it can happen. That vault is a hornet's nest. If you have second thoughts, no one would think less of you for it. But if you can get him home, it'd mean a lot. Watch for civilians, too. The fiends have been kidnapping locals. They just walk right into people's homes in the middle of the day and take them. But the man you're looking for is Bryce Anders. Anders was trying to find the leader, Motor Runner. You hear something like a chainsaw, you found Motor Runner. Put a bullet in his head, and you'll have some new friends around here. Could be better, I'll say that much. We set up here with our sights set on annexing New Vegas. It's a lot of resources that could do a lot of good for us. But that hasn't happened. If anything, they annexed us. They rake in the profits from our soldiers, and we're stuck protecting them from the Legion. Not exactly the plan. Now we're trying to secure the strip and the dam at the same time, and it's costing us. And in the meantime, General Oliver won't approve any offensive maneuvers. 
because he doesn't want to risk losing our positions. So we're in a holding pattern here. And Caesar's on the other side of the river, planning. Hmm. Well, why not? Given your recent arrival, at least I can safely rule you out as the leak. I'd like to have absolute trust in my men, but that's just not practical right now. Go ahead and look into it. See what you find. We don't have much to go on right now. Lately, every raiding party in New Vegas seems to have a map of our troop movements. It derails everything. Supplies, reinforcements, and it'll only get worse the longer we let it go on. Captain Curtis is heading up the investigation right now. He can fill you in. It's our main base. We took it because it lets us keep an eye on the Strip, and it had already been fortified before the Great War. From here, we handle most of the logistics for our operations in Nevada. Troop allocation, supply distribution, intel. Usually, General Oliver runs the show here, but he's on his way to the dam now, so I've taken on a lot of his duties here. Unfortunately, no. In fact, the word from the ranger stations has been especially concerning lately. It sounds like they've run into overwhelming resistance, and supplies just aren't reaching them. It's been so bad, I asked Sergeant Reyes at Camp Forlorn hope to look into it and see how it is that things could be so fouled up there. Everything was going according to President Campbell's plan at first. We met minor resistance from local troublemakers, but our two main objectives are still contested. Mr. House controls the Strip, and he won't so much as meet with our ambassador. And we're holding Hoover Dam. But Caesar's Legion is positioning itself to overrun it. If it falls, so will New Vegas. We'd be forced to withdraw. Bye. A little busy at the moment, but I can talk. This? The OSI lab. We don't get many visitors. The smell puts people off, I think. Nobody ever said science would smell clean and fresh. Anyway, you get used to it if you give it some time. I know, I don't sound the part. Get raised by Brahmin ranchers and you never lose the twang. Drives Hildren crazy. But I know every inch of the power grid from Hoover Dam to Shady Sands. That's what we do here. Try to optimize the power output from the dam. Some of the others are working on an agricultural project, but truth be told, they aren't making much progress. Not yet, anyway. Head researcher. Mostly on the dam project, but I help out on other things when they need me. Gotta be flexible. You mean, give you work? No, that'd be up to the administrator, Hildern. He's back there in his office. Between you and me, I don't think he ever leaves. Plenty of mercs go in to see him, though. I can't say. We're not supposed to talk about the research. Not the details. If you're interested, I'm sure he'd see you. Nice to meet you. If you need anything, I'm almost always in the lab. Hey. A pleasure to meet you. I'm Dr. Thomas Hildern, Director of Operations, OSI East. I presume you're here about Vault 22? No, they wouldn't have briefed you, would they? Probably better that our junior fellows stay within the bounds of their pay grade anyway. Vault 22. Where to begin? Imagine, if you will, the wasteland in bloom. Vast fields of corn that grow from seeds and produce their bounty in the space of a month. Orchards of trees, their branches weighed halfway to the ground, hung with fat, ripe oranges, a harvest that could feed a city or a nation. And all of this, all this, requiring no more than a few drops of precious water and the efforts of only a handful of human farmers. Impossible? Precisely. Science has proven that truth a thousand times over, but how many wasteland savages believe it? Present company accepted, of course. The bounty I describe to you is no idle fantasy. It exists in primitive form only a few miles from where we stand. We need only reach out and unlock its secret. For that, the OSI needs you. Isn't it? One directs one's efforts, or the efforts of others, toward a goal, and progress is made. It's a matter of incentives, nothing more. 
I believe that the inhabitants of Vault 22 unlock the secrets of vegetative growth. Plants are spilling from their gate. No one tends them. No one waters them. Yet they multiply and spread in all directions. Find the reason for this miraculous growth, and I promise you the OSI will see that you are generously compensated. Good. No need to check in with the NCR authorities. I can authorize your payment from OSI accounts. Vaults typically contain a server room on a lower level, where they would have backed up their research data. A computer room, you understand? Download all the information on the central server to your Pip-Boy, and you'll be certain to bring me any notes or samples that you find, won't you? I thought it was a fairly straightforward assignment. It's a simple question of retrieving the data, which shouldn't prove overly challenging. Downloading the data will be handled by your Pip-Boy. You might think of yourself as a mere means of conveyance. Uh, no insult intended, of course. Oh? What might those be? To be frank, I have no idea. I leave the fighting to Colonel Shu, and I expect him to leave the science to me. Too many people have opinions on things they know nothing about. And the more ignorant they are, the more opinions they have. The Office of Science and Industry. It's a rather expansive topic. I could talk for hours, but I'm sure I'd bore you. Suffice to say, we are the leading edge of the NCR. Our work focuses on practical matters. Medicine, engineering, biology. The dam, for instance. OSI roots its energy supply to our cities in the West. That's only one responsibility of this office. Director of the entire OSI? Me? If I didn't know better, I'd say you were trying to plant seditious ideas in my head. <laughs> no, I direct our Eastern operations. I've been responsible for squeezing unprecedented levels of power from the dam. I'm also confronting the problem of food production in what little spare time I have, but I've found some promising leads. Not yet, but our government understands the value of proactive thought. Our studies project an imbalance between production and consumption. Or, for a layman such as yourself, not enough food, too many mouths to feed. Mass starvation in a decade or so. We aid some programs the Republic has sponsored involving sharecropper farms in the area. But those haven't panned out too well from what I hear. There have been complaints about the amount of water we're supplying. But those are just excuses for lack of diligence, I'm sure. Directly? No. But we attempt to maximize its output. You have no idea how difficult it is to provide power to an entire nation. Fortunately, we also have the Helios-1 facility. One of our external contractors recently got the station up and running. His name was something like... Exceptional, or Marvelous, or... I see. Uh, of course you did. Yes. Goodbye. Download complete. Begin recording. Navarro Outpost Scientist, I am glad that EDE has reached you. You will find several data banks of information on this machine. Please handle this information with the utmost care, as it represents the sum total of the results of my research on the Duraframe iBots. There are also several data banks with information on my research into Poseidon Energy and some projects they were working on in the Mojave area. Did Dr. Hildern... This really isn't any of my business, but... Did he give you a job? I shouldn't say anything. I know that. But you're not the first person Hildern sent out to the vault. There were a lot of mercs. One after another. None of them came back. Then, about a week ago, there was a scientist, Keeley. She's unusual. Not the sort of person you'd expect, but she's an absolute genius, and... And he didn't mention her? Not even her name? Or any of the other mercs? But now he's hired you. Which means one of two things. Either he heard back from Keeley, and she failed, or he's given up on her. Listen, I make a fair wage, but I'm not rich. Not by any means. Maybe my kind of money wouldn't appeal to your average merc. But I'm willing to pay you if you'll find Keeley and make sure she's safe. In right leaving her out there. No idea if she's alive or dead. I had a good feeling about you. 
moment you walked in. I mean it. Of course. Anything. Keeley's brilliant. An absolute genius. She plays at being mean, but it's all a front. When you've lived as long as she has, you get defensive around new people. Who wants to make a friend when you know you'll outlive them? I couldn't get her to say, but she talked about the war. The Great War, when the bombs fell, like she'd been there. So, I'm guessing pretty old. Two hundred years? Maybe more. My father used to say good things about them, but that was years ago. Back when they teach farmers and ranchers about crop rotation and the like. Nowadays, they've changed. They're doing what they can to discredit the NCR. Give us a bad name with the locals. Dr. Hildern trained with them years ago. Not me, though. I'm an OSI girl. Head researcher. Mostly on the dam project, but I help out on other things when they need me. Gotta be flexible. The director? He's... very well-spoken and... knowledgeable. He's not what you'd call warm, unless he wants something from you. And even then, it's kind of a cold warm. Most of the time, I focus on the science and try to forget him. He doesn't get mixed up in any actual work, though he tells people that he does. He sure does. Everyone knows it. I've just got to endure this job until the project is finished. But abandoning Keeley, he crossed a line. Taking credit for other people's work is one thing. Sending people to die in the waste is another. If Hildren tries to recruit any more mercs, I'm going to warn them. What can he do to me? I'm the only one who can run this lab. It's foul to tell the truth. Most people try to get what they can from the outside, even if it's just a smuggled candy bar now and then. Contreras is a genius. He can find almost anything you'd want. Takes caps to get him motivated, though. He won't do a thing for free. Right. Stay safe. Something I can do for you? I wish I had a first recon guy looking after me. Nice to meet you. I'm Curtis. Smart man. I could use somebody who can operate under the radar around here. Whoever our mole is, he's been slippery. Whenever one of the MPs gets too close, he changes his habits. Our last lead went cold weeks ago. You want my advice? Start by talking to people with a lot of eyes in the field. People like Lieutenant Boyd, or Sergeant Contreras, maybe. Careful with Contreras, though. He's not above suspicion himself. Keep me apprised of any leads you get. This guy's gotten a lot of my men killed. I'm just itching to return the favor. Well, I'll leave that to you. But I would recommend Lieutenant Boyd and Sergeant Contreras as two people who usually know what's going on around here. Officially, I'm in charge of Bravo Company. But since General Oliver has Bravo and most of our forces here garrisoned, I'm free to do other things. So I work with Colonel Shu on logistics, patrols, supply lines, reinforcements, that sort of thing. Lately, it's been less about that, and more about figuring out how that information is getting leaked to raiders. It's a big base with a lot of unhappy soldiers. They get stir-crazy. Hard to separate the malcontents from the actual culprit. Later.
I pity anyone who crosses Boyd. That woman is relentless. Boyd's in there with a the prisoner right now. Boy, is she pissed. You still got like a sore thumb around here. You sure you're in the right place? Now, what kind of MP would I be if I didn't notice anything suspicious? I've had soldiers go AWOL, break-ins, thefts, you name it. Maybe break-in isn't the right word. We didn't find signs of forced entry. But I've had reports of someone sneaking into the control tower at night. It's probably just a meeting spot for a steamy military base love affair. <sighs> Kids today. But it bothers me that they didn't break in. It means they have an access code. Most soldiers around the base don't have that. Sure, if you want to investigate. It's not like there's anything to steal up there. Just a bunch of old communications equipment. If you can find out any more, I'd be interested to hear it. There's something about this I really don't like. And if I weren't tied up here, I'd be staking it out personally. Not big on reading name tags, huh? That's okay. My name is long and difficult to pronounce. Ready for it? It's Boyd. Lieutenant Boyd to my friends. Colonel Shu has me handling the policing duties for the base. I've told him he could make my job a whole lot easier if he would just let me shoot anyone who talks back to me. But you know how colonels can be. Well, there's Anders. He's a ranger. That one's not suspicious so much as worrisome. He left on a dangerous assignment. Colonel Shu sent him out. Now I think he feels guilty not having any way to check up on him. Colonel Shu would really be the person to talk to. Not the kind of things you like to see go missing. No witnesses yet. I've got my money on Sergeant Contreras, who's supposed to be in charge of distribution, the little weasel. But he's too slick to let anyone catch him doing it. We've searched his possessions a dozen times. Nothing. Good. The more guns you can recover, the more I'll be able to use to shoot Contreras for being inept. Yeah, so far this has gone exactly as expected. Poorly. But with the work you've done for NCR already, you might be just what I've been looking for. We captured an honest-to-god centurion of Caesar's legion recently. Better believe it. Everybody. Everybody in Caesar's legion from Caesar on down will kill themselves before they can be captured. They're so twitchy they'd probably do it if you reached out to hug them. But here's this guy, who's an elite commander in their army and he just gives himself up even as his men are slitting their own throats around him. Well, I don't know about you, but to me, that sounds like a man who's willing to cooperate. Except he hasn't. Only times he speaks up are to insult you. He's a real prick, by the way. And I'm supposed to get information out of this guy. I like the way you think. Have I said that yet? Problem is that the NCR frowns on using that sort of tactic. There are some restrictions still in place from President Tandy's administration. But here's my favorite thing about you. You're not in the NCR. Plus, for all this guy knows, you're completely insane. That's a winning combination. I think if you rough him up enough, and really put some fear into him, he'll sing like a choir boy. So let's do this. When you're ready, I'll go in and give you a little intro. Then I leave the room, and you make him regret the day he was born. We go back and forth a couple times until either he talks or he can't move his jaw anymore. Either way, we've had our entertainment for the day. That's the spirit. Okay, I'll go in and have a word with him. Then I'll call you in. Long time no see, Silus. Lieutenant. I was just thinking about you. I'll sit tight. That's so. I was. I was just thinking about that pretty neck of yours. How sweet. 
I was thinking about how it would look with a Legion slave collar on it. Oh, pass. Do you know what I love about our slave collars, Lieutenant? If you love them, maybe you should try one on. I love how tightly they fit. I train my men to make sure the slave's flesh bulges a bit around the top and bottom. You know why? It's all the rage in fashion circles? Not quite. If you fit it just right, their body never gets used to the feeling of wearing it. It cuts in just enough when they swallow or turn their head to remind them who they belong to. And it's that constant reminder that keeps them docile. In that case, maybe you'd better save the collar you were gonna give me. Oh? For whom? For a friend of mine you're about to meet. My friend isn't very docile. And who is this friend of yours? You know all the rules the NCR instituted to protect enemy prisoners of war? Of course. My friend doesn't. Oh, and Silus? If you resist at all, I'll personally blow your brains out. Come on in. He's all yours. I'll be back in a bit to see how you're getting along. And I'll need you to surrender your weapons before you go in. You can pick them up from the locker on your way out. Let's finish this up, then we can talk. What an ugly little worm you are. What pile of excrement did the lieutenant pluck you from? You're nothing. You're some inept mercenary the NCR is paying to supplement its own incompetent soldiers. No, listen. Kaisar's secrets are safe with me. I stayed alive because Kaisar would have wanted it. I'm useless to him dead. I've told them nothing. They've gotten nowhere. I'm a Kenturian for Christ's sake. I deserve his trust. You have to let this go. I'll disappear. No one will ever see me again. That was always the plan in the first place. No, that's not what I meant. I... Lieutenant, this man is trying to kill me. He's not who you think he is. You don't have to do this. You've made your intentions clear. The Legion has abandoned me. I've done everything Kaisar ever asked of me, and this is how I am repaid. With assassination, I ambushed countless NCR patrols and wiped them out so that our operatives could move freely. I waited for him to dispatch us for three days, never questioning why the headaches he complained of would hinder his ability to command. I haven't breathed a word about the officer we planted here. He continues to radio intelligence to Kaisar's camp nearly every night. I've proven my loyalty. All you're doing is killing a loyal soldier. If that's Kaisar's policy, then I say his empire will crumble. What? What do you mean? No, you slimy bastard! Nothing I've said will change the outcome for you. No force can hold back the tide of the Legion. This camp, and everyone in it, will burn. You did well. I don't know how you did it without putting a scratch on him, and I'm a little disappointed personally, but it saved the NCR some face. And it could save us more than that when all is said and done. I'm gonna talk to some people when we're through here. This is about double the standard fee we'd give a consultant, but from what I saw, you're more of an artist. So think of this as your commission. Yep, see you around. Patrolling the Mojave almost makes you wish for a nuclear winter. We still haven't gotten Ranger Morales' body back from the fiends. Sure doesn't inspire confidence in the guys you're serving with.
Go. I really hope General Oliver Contreras has a good plan for Legion I know he's got back. more to sell. If you were serving, you'd probably be halfway to general by now. got this assignment, I was hoping there'd be more gambling. Contreras is holding it. Did the Colonel send you? I... I was hoping he might have changed his mind. I know. I've been crying. Stupid. I'm supposed to be a soldier. My husband, he's a ranger and he... He got murdered by a pack of fiends. Goddamn savages laid his body out to rot. Brass won't say it to me straight, but they mean to leave Esteban out there. I can see that plain. Colonel says he can't spare the men to bring Esteban back home. And the fiends, they put all kinds of mines and traps around his body. Snipers, too. Mister, I'd about given up hope. But you've got to be careful. I don't want anybody else dying on my account. Esteban's body is laid out between some of the buildings, east of the Repcon headquarters. At least that's what his squadmates said. There's an NCR position just north of there. It's on the way. They should be able to tell you what the situation is. Hello. Patrolling the Mojave almost makes you wish for a nuclear winter. Listen, asshole, I know you're not really an NCR health inspector, so you can cut the restaurant critique routine. And I want my 50 caps back, because I looked it up and there ain't no disease called colorectal implosion syndrome. So I paid you to look the other way for nothing. Wait, wait. You're not... Oh, wow. I'm sorry. You look just like... Never mind. Sorry. So what can I serve you up? That's nothing. You just look like the health inspector who stopped through for the yearly inspection a couple of weeks back. I was hoping I wouldn't have to wait another 11 months to see his crooked ass to get my caps back. Ah, well. Anything I can get you? Oh yeah, you can order up anything you want, as long as it's corn or beans. <laughs> Just kidding, haven't you heard? With a few shipments from home and a little variety, the troops are getting restless for some quality grub. You can only do so much as a chef with just corn, beans, onions, and peppers. Well, we haven't had any quality meat in months. Everyone in the camp just eating beans for protein. It isn't pretty. Some of my kitchen machinery is broken down, too, so we've been eating mostly raw vegetables. And I'm desperate for spices or seasonings. 
Anything, just something for the general mood around here. And doesn't need to all come from the same source. There are a bunch of different vendors around who sell meat. Fitz, the Nashes, Crimson Caravan. We've never really tried to go out and organize deals with merchants to supply our food. Already having an overstock of food, we haven't needed to. But we really need some good old red meat on the menu soon. So I'm willing to divert some caps in their direction if they're open to supplying us. Here's the list. We've been scrapping together quick fixes to keep it running for months. I think it finally crapped out and needs a full overhaul. It's the goofy machine behind the counter in the corner next to the stove. I'd be much obliged if you could take a look at it and get it fixed up. I don't know. Try the various traders around the waist. Or the pawn shop on west side might have some parts. Oh, I've heard of a place called House Tools you could check out. It's an old factory on the north side of Vegas. Just a word of warning, though. I hear no one who goes in there comes back out. Could be traps, crazy robots, or who knows what's in that place. The Crimson Caravan would probably be able to arrange a regular shipment, but I don't know of any spices known to improve mood. Hell, we have a whole research department. One guy's even set up in the main terminal building. They're the ones who ought to be looking into it. What can I do for you?